Welcome to another edition of Beer for Breakfast ABV. I am Danielle from The Moog Show on 91X. As always, I've got Paul Segura with me, brewmaster from Carl Strauss. Cheers. How's it going, buddy? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Excellent. Uh, we are featuring Melvin Brewing today. We've got head brewer Bobby Oliver with us. We also have general manager Ryan with us. How's it going, guys? Good. How are you? Good well, to have you guys. Welcome. Um, you. So... You guys are like kind of the new kids on the block, but not the new kids when it comes to brewing, right? Correct. So you guys just opened up your brew pub down uh, downtown East Village? Yep, yeah. Correct. 14, yeah. 14th and Market is where we are. So where what are the roots of Melvin? Where did Melvin come from? So Melvin was uh, originally started in a Thai restaurant, Tie Me Up, in uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, 2009 by our uh, founder, Jeremy Tofty. He, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Paul's here too. So he sold, um, he actually, he sold his, kind of like a Sprinter van, right? Sold it, got a 20-gallon homebrew system, and started brewing in the back of Time Me Up. Which that's is, awesome. I love which that. Is, which is, which is, <laughs> is kind of cool, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's actually where, you know, the name Melvin comes from. Uh, he thought it was pretty hilarious that his friends would come up to the bar and ask for Melvin since it's a front wedgie. And <laughs> so, <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of where that came from. So uh, very cool. Yeah, oh it was, it, yeah, it's pretty funny, really. Brewer so, humor. Yeah, brewer humor. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, Can I have a Melvin? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, buddy. Well, off camera beforehand, we tried the um, the gravel pith and holy camoli tangerine, all up in your face. Yeah. Tell yep. me a little bit it's about a, that. So it's a fruited pale ale um, with uh, 168 pounds of tangerine puree. Ooh, so, where do you even get that much? Oregon fruit. Wow. Yeah, they uh, they do a killer job. I've used their stuff in uh, beer before, and uh, I thought it'd be fitting because uh, not everyone likes super crazy aggressive IPAs and pale ale. So I was like, well, we can just fruit a pale, make it sweet, um, very pithy. Obviously, that's where the name comes from, uh, the gravel pith. And it tastes like super fresh tangerine. Yeah, like somebody so really just squeezed tangerine. Yeah. Like right I was saying, it. it's it's like borderline beer mosa. So. Very yeah. much yeah. so. I mean, yeah, it really all, is. all morning long. So we have we had some pretty good feedback about it too. People really, you know, people really enjoy it. So. You know, it is like super fruit forward, but it, you get the hops, you get the yeah. the beer mm -hmm. absolutely know, there as well. Yeah, it's, it's a nice. Got a, it's got a lupulin powder in it, Simcoe, so that's where that comes from. Nice. Yeah. Mm. It's pretty, uh, I pretty, dig it. pretty rad, easy drinking pale. Well, coming over to, I would assume this is a flagship beer, so it's, it's the yeah. Melvin IPA. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> uh, what's the story behind this? Um, well, I'm, first, let's cheers to Melvin. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Yay. let's cheers to Melvin. And all your successes. And, yeah. Cheers. Welcome you guys to San Diego. One brewery of the year, what? Three years ago? 2015, 2017. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Congrats on that. Thank you so much. Well earned. Ooh. So, Tofty's a big fan of West Coast style IPAs, um, and that's kind of mm. where this came from. Um, very fruit forward, bitter, but still got, you know, a little bit of maltiness in the back there um, to kind of back everything up, but it's just our flagship. I mean, it's just, we're known for our very well balanced IPAs and beers. Absolutely, and, and incredibly smooth. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, no, no bitterness at the end. It's just, it's just there and it's gone. It's yep. fantastic. I mean, it's it nicely balanced. Yeah. Excuse my ignorance, but I didn't really think that beer like this could come out of a place like Wyoming. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like you know, like yeah. let's let's be re let's yeah. be real here. Yeah. Like when I think of Wyoming, I think of you know very light beer yes. that I've been working outside all day long and yep. I can crush like 15 of these and still be fine. And yeah. these are definitely beers that if you crush 15 of these, you're not going anywhere. No, absolutely. And we actually had, uh, that's kind of the story of uh, MBR too, is that our old GM at time, you have Jamie, it's in Jackson Hole. Mm -hmm. And so he'd have a lot of skiers and, and tourists that would come in and say, hey, I want something like Coors Light or whatever. So we brewed something kind of similar. We brewed MBR. So that's, it is something that, you know, suits a lot of taste. So, so it wasn't all locals there. You get people coming in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, the time you have one, absolutely. How does it compare to like the San Diego market? You guys are from San Diego. Oh, yeah. It's to, I mean, it's, it's completely different. I think Jackson Hole itself um, is just, it is, it's, it's a big ski town. And they do have a lot of transition, a lot of tourists. So it's they have their, you know, busy seasons and their busy seasons are the ski seasons. Mm -hmm. So everybody comes, you know, goes skiing all day and they come and they hang out and they drink beers. And so, uh, so it's completely different. Where San Diego is just, you know, an incredibly saturated market. Um, and there's so many good beers to choose from. It's, you know, it's tough. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's, we are so lucky to have all of these 
breweries around here that make this delicious beer. Um, we're just happy to be one of them that we get to come in and hang out and do it too. So. <coughs> so and you guys are in a prime spot to do it. Yes, oh, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The f right there, at 14th and Market. Like I am so stoked for that whole little area to like yeah. blow up. Basically, when those si like sky rises are done, because you've got Amplified right over there, a yep. block off of you guys. Duck foot yep. the other way. Yeah. It's gonna be a really awesome place. Um, I have to know. How did a brewery that got started in Wyoming all about Wu Tang? Where does the Wu Tang come in? Where is the? <laughs> I think the Wu Tang. I think Jeremy and and um, so, and, and overhead brewer. I think was they were all excited about it. They were just they got down with Wu Tang. That was their deal. They just liked old school hip hop. Jeremy would would pump it when uh, he had worked at Time Me Up before you know 2007, and, and when he came back in 2009. And they would have to, he said when they had parties, they'd have to rent out the floors above them mm -hmm. because there was, there was a, like a hotel above it. Mm -hmm. And so they'd have to rent out the floors. So, uh, you know, people, because people would call down and they would complain and say, oh, so this is too loud and yeah. da, 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 da. So that's kind of what it, it was. So it was kind of like that ski town party atmosphere, you know what I mean? So It's funny, the first time that I ever, you know, encountered Melvin was 2017 Great American Beer Festival. Where I'm like, I'm like, what is this brewery that's got a school bus yeah. that has, you know, a DJ yeah, that's, yeah. you know, bumping Wu Tang in the middle of the convention center <laughs> yeah. in, in Denver? And, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, you know, I like heard your guys' story, and then the beer to back it up. Also, yes. I was stoked when I found out you guys were coming to see Yeah, me. yeah. It's fun, man. It's a good time, and that's what I dig it. The bus itself is like a little green room, kind of behind. The yeah, building. yeah. It's an old, uh, it's an old border patrol bus. Is, what is that what it is? Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it's cool. It's super cool. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. So you guys have a big event coming up, 2 by 4 Day. Yes. What is 2 by 4 Day? So 2 by 4 Day, uh, that is going to be us celebrating our uh, flagship double IPA, 2 by 4 um, We'll do that. Uh, a lot of different uh, shenanigans and things, all kinds of ninja outfits and stars and uh, <laughs> things of that nature. Obviously, Wu-Tang. We're also tapping a bunch of really good beers. Uh, that are coming up. Um, so Citra Domus, uh, we'll have that. That's one of our beers in our rotational double IPA series. Mm -hmm. And actually was the beer that flipped my light on for, <laughs> for Melvin. Actually, Paul dropped off some I, when I worked at Ballast Point, And I had Citra Domus and I had like a mixed six pack. And I had Melvin and, and Hubert and your IPA, which are all phenomenal. But I had Citra Domus and I was just like, like that was it you know what i mean i said this mm -hmm. is i said this is amazing um so anyway so we're tapping that and that's that's coming into the market next week i think um we'll have that for two by four day we're also tapping um our hazy uh cloudy 5000 which we kind of we debuted really at gabf got a lot of good uh -huh. good feedback about it and then we're tapping um barrel aged ruckus which is kind of a right. <laughs> kind of an elusive Ooh. beer nice. so um there's a lot of good things um, on the horizon for this this party, and um, we're hoping it's going to be fun. We're hoping it's going to be a good time. Awesome. Cool. Well, getting into our last beer, um, Bobby, I know this is very near and dear to your heart. Yes. <laughs> Tell me about this beer. So this is a Ronin IPA. Mm -hmm. um, my wife and I just had a baby boy two months ago. His name is Ronin. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I made my daughter a beer um, when I was at CBC, so I thought it was only fitting that I made him one. Yeah. So yeah. Ronin IPA, me being, I, w I would consider myself an old soul. I don't have as much, uh, you know, experience as Paul, but I grew up, um, you know, working for Green Flash, CBC. So mm -hmm. yeah. West Coast style IPAs were what we brewed. And right. And this is what that is. So this is a um, Simcoe Mosaic Amarillo Centennial. Uh, West Coast style. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. Congrats delicious. on that. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. So good bitterness, Ooh. just like a West Coast style IPA would, but you got all the you know the meaty malt. This to back could get it up. you into trouble. Oh yeah. Six this, point, again. <laughs> this, this, this is this is trouble. Six, six point nine percent. It just really goes good. down. Mm -hmm. You know, real, real smooth. It's kind you're of, right about the meaty malt thing. There is kind of a sturdy sort of nutty, like yeah. almost yeah. biscuity. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so really good. Some old techniques, some new school techniques. Um, 
Played with the water chemistry a little bit, a um, little bit of RO water, some calcium chloride to give it that full mouth feel. So. It's very clean and very dry, mm -hmm. very hop forward, but you get that little bit of biscuit at yeah. the end, sort of a toasty, bready thing that's really nice. I'm, I like I'm that a lot. I'm big on, on that flavor. The Cloudy 5000 um, that's going to be coming out, I, I, it's a Maris Otter base just because I wanted it to have that nice. real good biscuity Excellent. note to mm -hmm. it. So, yeah, stoked, with, stoked with how it came out. So. Couldn't be happier. So, Bobby, you have a really great reputation in San Diego for making really great beers. For anyone who, you know, what would you tell anyone who hasn't been to Melvin yet? Um, Good question. And, and why they should come into Melvin. Like, why, like... Like, I, I mean, feel like you're a really great authority on this. You make amazing <laughs> beers. You are... Yeah, I mean, I would never put anything out that I didn't like. Um, like you said, I'm known for making solid beer. That's mm -hmm. because, I mean, I've gone through trial and error, like... Yeah, that's not good. Let's not put it out. Just because it's it's a represent representation of me, the brand, all of us. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, growing up under John Egan, I mean, he taught me a lot. Ryan Brooks, Mike uh, Tyson. So mm -hmm. they all taught me. Those are good dudes. Yeah, They're they all great. taught me a lot. Chuck, I mean, Chuck Silva, you, you guys yep. go way back. So, yep. so East Jensen. Village, people can find a bunch of your beers, but will they also find beers from Wyoming? Yep. Yep, so we have uh, four serving tanks there. Um, those are always filled with house beers, um, my recipes. Yep. And then we also have stuff that was shipped down to us from cool. Alpine, Wyoming. Yes, so we usually we about... have um, at the pub and the continuing room. We usually have a rotational, um, the, the double IPA. So like I said, we'll have that back with Citra Thomas. We had Hop Shocker for a while, which everybody really liked. But typically the ones that we'll have uh, down at the pub, we have Melvin, Hubert, um, Killer Bees, Jesus, and 2x4 mm -hmm. constantly, All constant, time. constant nice. rotation. So... Um, awesome. Yeah, so it's cool. And we also have a pretty uh, pretty gangster happy hour, which is uh, Tuesday through Friday, 4 to 6, uh, $6 appetizers, $5 tulips, so basically your 4 by 8 your, your big guys, nice. and then $3 pint. So that is a $3 pint on, you know, Tuesday through Friday, which is kind of nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. All so. right. I dig it. Yeah. Cool, guys. Well, super stoked that you're here. Yeah. What is the best way to keep up with what's going on with Melvin? Mm. I would say you could probably uh, you can jump on Instagram. Uh, we're we're on there uh, quite a bit. Um, little get you to know what's going on. Anytime when we we brew a new beer and we tap it, uh, we make sure that we we post something on Instagram so everybody mm -hmm. can kind of see what's happening. Um, so yeah, that's probably the very best way. And are you guys distributing throughout San Diego? Soon. Yes, soon we soon, soon yeah. we will be. Yeah. Yes, uh, we'll be doing some uh, some house beers, uh, hopefully shortly. Um, and obviously we're already doing our uh, our Alpine beers so. Yeah, yeah, awesome, yeah. guys. Well, like I said, I was really, really stoked when I found out that Melvin was going to be opening up a brew pub in San Diego, and you guys are in a really awesome spot, and yeah. I can't wait to see what comes, you know, in the coming yeah, we're years. Excited. Yeah, we're I've excited. been to the tasting room a couple of times. Each time has been an amazing experience, and it's a really good spot. That's cool. When we're stoked, too, we're stoked just about East Village in general. I think we got a lot of... Uh, you got a lot of breweries and people there that are kind of down for each other. So mm -hmm. um, that's that's really, really cool. There's a lot of really good camaraderie. And so I think we're all, as a team, excited to build East Village to what it can be. So As a downtown vet, you got any advice? Welcome to the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I don't know about advice, but just, uh, I mean, I think they'd fit in extremely well. Yeah. Watch awesome. out for the meter maids. They're the most guy. miserable oh, people in all oh, of yeah. San Diego. Oh, yeah. They've already got me. They're <laughs> Are they awful? Awesome? Uh, Are they terrible? Uh, yeah. 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 I, I just start They're bribing hardcore. them with beers. I don't even <laughs> I think that that would work on I had to put like a keg of beer in my car the other day and got a $75 ticket. But there's like scooters everywhere. Yeah. So yeah. You know, Scoot funny. them around. Yeah. yeah. And they they fly. They go about 20 miles an hour. Scooters. Right on, guys. Well, thank you so much for making time to come on for beer for breakfast. Absolutely. Super appreciate it. Welcome to the hood. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Yes. Thank you guys for having Cheers. us. Yeah. It's on. Cheers to good, independent, local craft beer. Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, every Friday morning, Paul comes into the studio to uh, Moak Show at 920, and he tells us as well as you what you should be drinking this weekend. I'm pretty sure he'll be bringing in some Melvin beer. I will. So uh, tune into that, and you can find all of our previous beer for breakfast on 91x.com. Thank you so much, and cheers to independent beer. Cheers. Cheers. 91x.